I have always taken an objection to this like when they talk about uh, poetry in general they start from Adiga who you know started in the middle uh, in the 50s and 60s but when they talk of Akka Mahadevi they start from uh, when they talk of uh, women's poets they, they start from Akka Mahadevi who is the 12th century so it is 12th century Akka Mahadevi 19th century Sanchi Honnamma and 20th century Prativananda Kumar made, made to stand in one line but Akka Mahadevi was a saint and she never bothered about the society but I live in a society I have a husband I have two children and I do I do have to go and work every day you know so we have to deal with the mundane also and I am not a saint but still my poems are directly you know pitched against uh, Akamadevi so I have always written and you know protested against this so what we actually did was all the women poets every one of them have one poem redefining the Puranic uh, uh, f you know, uh, women or redefining the old beliefs, even Akamaha Devi. They either question the Draupadi or the Sita or whoever it is. Every woman poet has one poem that wherein she talks or questions or uh, analyzes or redefines or re you know establishes the uh, old uh, women. See, that is okay for us because we are in a way negotiating the past and bring it, you know, uh, making a connection to the present. But this, you know, does not happen with the men. They don't have to negotiate with Allama Prabhu or Baswana. They don't have to, they are not pitched against Baswana or Allama Prabhu. So, the, in fact, uh, in the beginning we were trying very hard to, you know, sort of uh, aggressively to uh, establish ourselves. But gradually we found that we don't have to do that because women we write our poems in the way we want to write so it doesn't not necessarily be like how the men write in the beginning we were writing as if to prove that we are equal to you we can also write like you but eventually and very soon actually we found our own voice in our own language so it was a women finding their language you know, we, we write differently, we think differently, and we are women. So I don't have to be pitched against the men uh, writer, poets, actually. This is what happened in Kannada. And then we started evolving a language which is very, very woman-specific. You know, we, we speak differently and we think differently. And we were not uh, ashamed or hesitant to register that. But the problem is... The critics, you know, they, found, they failed to f recognize that. So it is very difficult when a woman's writing is not evaluated in a way that she deserves, you know. So it, in fact, I found it very difficult, though I am celebrated and though I am given the, uh, the kind of attention that a poet should be given, I still sometimes feel that they don't know how to read a woman. They don't know how to understand a woman. So the, even the very good... Uh, critiques that I get, you know, is uh, I feel that uh, there is something missing because they don't know how to read me. That is a feeling that uh, most of the women poets have now. But in the recent past, the things have changed. I think after, when we go to the next section, we can uh, discuss the contemporary, the younger, you know, the third generation uh, poets, you know, and that, there we find a different sort of uh, negotiation. Yeah. As a bridge to that discussion, let me introduce uh, uh, some of the elements also. For example, it's not just the women poets of that particular period who were trying to negotiate with the past and maybe trying to rebel against the past. It was the younger Dalit writers also. For them, of course, the questions were far larger because uh, you have a philosophical tradition, a literary tradition, and a tradition of using language which uh, doesn't in any way connect to what they are now experiencing. Their experiences of modernity was very different. Uh, their evaluation of the past was also very different. So I would put it this way, that uh, uh, there were these, uh, I, I don't want to call them groups, I would want to say there were these voices uh, which uh, felt that in order to articulate their sense of living fully in the present, uh, they, they need to establish a very different relationship with the past. It may not be being obsessed with the past, but trying to do something very new. And wherever necessary, as you were saying, 
breaking the stereotypes and then re-examining the myths of the past and then trying to reinterpret all these which are part of the common sense understanding you know of the of the readers in uh, Canada now th that I I would say it happened with the other voices also but now if you look at the present scenario uh, I think the Navier tradition is behind us and then there were the protest movements in 70s and 80s uh, we are now uh, confronting a very different uh, situation what uh, we see around us in uh, Karnataka is uh, we don't have the domination of uh, one literary movement which can gather up all these voices give it a kind of a coherence they are very brilliant uh, individual writers each writer exploring his experience in his own way uh, without trying to uh, you know, enter into the matrix of some kind of a literary or a social movement. I think that has happened because the writers come from very different locations. You know, there was a time when Tejasvi and others were complaining that almost all Canada writers are teachers in colleges and universities, and therefore their experiential world is extremely limited. But now you have you have uh, techies, you have engineers, you have women entrepreneurs, you have uh, many women who have gone back to the villages, you have activists, you, are tho you have those who are working with the Devadasis, they come from very different locations. What's your response to yes. this? Yes, so that in fact, that is the latest uh, explosion that has happened in uh, Kannada, Kannada writing. It is because of the, uh, of course, the technology and uh, people can uh, use uh, Kannada on the <laughs> in the internet on social media so uh, people who are sitting in America or any part of the world writing can immediately put it in their blog or in their uh, social media which and we are responding to that so the technology has actually brought together a lot of people who are like you said not from the traditional uh, Kannada teaching areas they are uh, writing uh, uh, bringing in various experiences also to uh, this uh, this kind of, in fact i feel we are greatly you know, privileged that people who who don't use kannada in their uh, profession are are choosing kannada and poetry or even short story to express themselves the medium of expression that they are choosing kannada itself you know we are very grateful for that actually so the various ex, uh, experiences are also coming into it but on the other hand i feel there is a lot of polarization that is happening now not 30 years ago like, you know, uh, I in one of the uh, festivals, a uh, Dalit poet uh, very uh, grandly declared on the stage that it was very easy for uh, Pratibha to publish her uh, poems 40 years ago because she was a Brahmin. I was shocked. I said, what? Did I send a caste certificate with my, along with my poem? He said, no, your name itself suggests that you are a Brahmin. So I wrote a, after that I wrote a poem that says you can get rid of Brahminism as easily as you can remove your bra. So and that poem because that was translated to Malayalam and Tam Tamil and uh, they say that went on to become a uh, hit by itself. So this was a new thing that we were fighting the polariz polarization that has happened now on the basis of caste and class. You know that is a new thing that uh, we are fighting right now, but because of the abundance of uh, uh, poems or even other write creative writing that is happening right now uh, we are in the the sankramana what do you call that the transition period now you know the, there's so much happening so much happening in Kannada literature that uh, you can choose and pick and you have the choices which you didn't have earlier you know so i think now they need to be discussed like earlier in the modernist time, like Anant Murthy and uh, A.K. Ramanujan and Adiga and others, they would sit in a coffee hotel in a coffee cafe in Mysore and discuss. But the coffee cafe, the social media is the new coffee cafe, you know, where everybody is uh, talking, you know, talking to each other and discussing on social media. And uh, some time back, there was a very senior poet who made fun of these uh, uh, youngsters, calling them these Facebook poets. 
So I I took up for them and said, why not? If uh, people, uh, seniors were sitting in coffee cafe and discussing, these people are uh, discussing on the Facebook, it's OK. So the Facebook poets got together and brought out an anthology. And they also had a poetic uh, session, you know. They had a session where the, they all got together and read out their uh, poems. But in this, what is happening is they are, in a way, disconnected with the past because they have not read many of the seniors. Because they, were, they, don't, they didn't study Kannada as a subject, and they were all engineers and doctors and lawyers and others, they did not read the seniors. So they, it is as if they have discovered the language, they have discovered the medium now. So th that is where the disconnect happens. Like suddenly a woman, uh, write, a girl writes something and thinks that she is the first one to write it. But we wrote that 40 years ago. They don't realize that. So I always have to tell them, or when, when a girl comes and tells me that this I have written for the first time. Like, you know, every generation discovers romance. Every generation discovers this uh, new feeling of, uh, you know, as if uh, breaking out from the uh, past. So that is happening, but it's OK. In a nice way, we, are re we do reconnect with them. We do connect with them. And the seniors and the youngsters, you know, at some point, we come together. I really wish uh, Kambar was here today. Because I am a next generation to Kambar. And I wish there was a young poet who was here. And the three of us, if we had connected, you would know how. Though we are uh, standing on our own, we still connect with the past. You know, That is the past forward that uh, you could have seen as a, uh, we could have given you an example of that. But uh, I'll make just three small interventions. One is uh, the poetry that's appearing on the social media and has a very different kind of circulation is not just a question of a change in the media. It also means that you have, as somebody put it, many Canadas now uh, available to the young writer uh, in which uh, he or she can uh, articulate her experiences. That's one thing. The other is whenever there's a contestation about uh, class and caste, it speaks more of a, more of the social world than like an intrigue in the literary critical establishment. I think that's how we should be taking it. And the third one uh, is that uh, contemporary Kerala literature is responding in a very big way to the many disruptions which have been brought about by the processes of uh, globalization. In fact, uh, it would not be an exaggeration to say that all our uh, important young writers uh, are doing this. They are trying to understand what's happening to their everyday lives, what is happening to their communities. Just to give one small example, you have a brilliant uh, Dalit poet who says, now when I go back to my village, I see that on the walls of the Lord God Hanuman, I see advertisements about uh, uh, jobs available in the US. You know, he <laughs> says that this is the kind of uh, world that we have to deal with now, the disruptions which have been caused and the pressures which are uh, around us. I, I, I think uh, Canada literature is participating in this in a very big way. Uh, it's not that uh, you have a category called women's writing. I would say that. Uh, there is a whole body of writing now uh, which has uh, access to uh, many unexplored uh, aspects of Canada and a new social world and a new audience, and it is trying to deal with this. Uh, uh, shall we now yeah. take some yeah, questions yeah, from the uh, audience so that uh, Pratibha will be very happy to talk to you? <laughs> you also. Okay, any questions? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, there is a session in the afternoon uh, in which I will be reading uh, both uh, in Kannada and uh, English uh, translation of uh, my poems. Any questions? Yes. Hi. Thank you for the wonderful dis uh, discussion. I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Uh, First of all, uh, we talked about the influence of the past. What about any connections with uh, Western literature? For example, countries like Indonesia, they are now getting on to uh, magic realism after so many years. 
Uh, the second question would be, how has the readers responded to vernacular literature? I understand that English literature is becoming much more popular. So how has the young readers responded to vernacular literature? I'll answer your second question first. It's the contrary that is true, actually. See, the, I, had a, I wrote an article about this for uh, Times of India, and I spoke to about 10 authors, actually. The English authors, because of their visibility, think uh, they are more popular. It is not so. The, and we don't use the word vernacular anymore. We use it as the regional language, the bhashas. The Kannada language, uh, it, uh, it's so in other languages also. We have our readers, we know our readers, and we are celebrated. So it is not that we are pitched against the English authors who may be sold all over India or all over the globe, but they don't know who their readers are. And uh, if you are selling, ten, uh, say, 10,000 books in English are sold, and if uh, 1,000 or 2,000 is sold in Canada, if you take the ratio, you know, we are more celebrated. You know, I know my uh, readers. And we don't feel, we don't have that. Uh, in, usually, this is a question that uh, comes up in most of the lit fest, actually. And especially the English uh, lit fest, you know. they Because of the media projection, the English authors are given more space and there's no more visibility. But uh, we don't uh, resist that, you know. We, we resent that, actually. I'm happy in my uh, wherever, uh, whatever position I've got. So it, it, is, it is not right to say that the English authors have taken over or uh, something like that. No. We never wanted the English uh, readers to read us, actually. Though the translations are now available and there are more and more works are being translated, it is good. It is only a bonus, actually. If, if you're reading me in English, it is only a bonus. But my original uh, strength is that I am a Kannada poet and that I am expressing all this my anguish, my desires, my thinking, everything in Kannada. And secondly, uh, the first question you asked about the Indonesian uh, others, we, ne we never lost touch, actually, with the, with the past, in a way. See, the modern Kannada literature is 100 years old. The first uh, book by uh, B.M. Shri, titled English Gita Galo, came in 1922. You know, and uh, they were influenced by the English authors because more, some of them, like even Anant Murthy, they went to London to study and they, they had uh, studied the English literature very well and uh, all that influence was there on them. But now that, that era is gone. Now we, the younger poets are made, they may have to take inspiration from the modernist poets of Kannada. And there are a lot of translations from other language uh, poets also. Like, uh, say, for example, the poetry, future of poetry is online, actually. Say, for example, there is one poem, hunter.com. Every day, I go visit that. And poets from all over, you know, the countries that I don't even know, the societies I don't even know, they are posting their poems. So when I post a poem like Devi, there was a young girl, one 14-year-old girl from Sudan, asking me a question, what is Devi? She didn't know what is Devi. So we are, uh, you know, the, the opportunity, everything is so open now that we are suddenly negotiating with uh, uh, poets who are writing in alien languages and uh, they, are, they just are connect, trying to connect, you know. So uh, that has happened in Canada on the social media also. Suddenly I'm reading a poet who I didn't even know existed. So uh, we ha there is no hesitation or fear. It is it, uh, the future of Canada poetry is very secure, and uh, we are not in competition with the English poets. Uh, I'll just add one sentence to what you're saying. That uh, your question was about the influence of the West. Uh, there have been two phases, as she pointed out, in the Navodaya period, early 20th century. It all began with translations of the Romantic and the Victorian poets. But let me also tell you that. Uh, the more important poets of that time uh, did not produce imitations through creative misreadings by returning to their own living and oral traditions. They were doing something very new. And it uh, happened again with uh, the European literary modernism. I was mentioning the Navier period of the 70s. Uh, right now, you know, uh, our Canada reader uh, writers have felt that they don't have to 
uh, go elsewhere to rediscover magic realism. I'll just give one example. Devanur Mahadeva wrote Kusuma Bale 26 years ago. And this uh, 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 novel, uh, it makes use of uh, uh, many techniques which are now associated with magic realism. But if you ask Mahadeva, he tells you that he went back to the original Dalit folk poems in Canada. And he followed the rhythms and also the constant shifts, you know, from the real to the more than real, etc. I, I, I think that's where the exploration leads to. We have a question here and one here. Yes, ma'am. I will come back to this question. In English, uh, do you think the justice gets done? Does the poem have that heart and soul of your Kannad thing and people who read in English, do they uh, get the heart of that poem? See, uh, that is the aim of uh, any good translation, actually. And everybody knows it is a translation. So it's not that uh, even if, I see, we, we read Russian and French literature through English, which was a translation. So I don't know how, the, how Tolstoy would have written. But still, I know Tolstoy through English. So whatever I could get from that, I have got. So it is the same for us also. See, the Kannada word, there may be some specific, very specific, culturally specific word which may not be able to, which anybody may, uh, may not be able to translate. But the thought can, uh, can be put forward. So it's OK. It's OK. I think we have time only for one more question. Yes. Uh, I really appreciated your talk, especially that bit about uh, the regression mm -hmm. in contemporary poetry, you know, as far as uh, uh, certain influences from the past occur. So what do you think as a poet? I mean, I think it's perfectly all right for young and contemporary poets to detach themselves from the past, at least certain things like caste and communal and class divides. So are the young contemporary Kannada poets trying to do this? Because I don't know. It seems to be very difficult to throw away Brahmanism like a bra these days. I think uh, the polarization that I was talking about refers to this. The Dalits are more intent on proving that they are Dalits, that they are, you know, and the Brahmins are more intent on proving they are Brahmins, and the same with Muslims and others, you know. So uh, I see that uh, more the activism has taken a front seat. You know, when you read, I don't know why. I don't know why. It is. It is political. In fact, uh, these days, if like uh, this morning, she was asking me if I am a political poet. I said, in everything we write, uh, uh, political uh, aspect is an, an integral part of what you write. You know. So it is, uh, when I said regression, I didn't mean uh, in that way. Uh, see, earlier, if I wrote something, they would just take it as a woman protesting against the oppression, OK? But now, they read it as a Brahmin woman protesting against her. And they immediately, the question is, would a Dalit woman write this? How does a Dalit woman handle this? I think uh, we have gotten over the Western influence thing, actually. Uh. Huh. Yeah, in fact, uh, everybody, the minute there is a, uh, a very stupid declaration by a politician, there are 10 poems the next day. Everybody, they, they are very alert now, you know. They immediately come up and say, you know, they protest and uh, see that is what I say. Uh, Canada, con contemporary Canada poetry and the uh, short story is very vibrant because nobody is sitting quiet. You can't get away with saying, uh, making a sweeping statement and like, so for example, there was a, a politician who said uh, South Indians. You remember that South Indian uh, comment? How it was trolled all over? How it was trolled? So it was included in poems, in short stories, in plays, in everywhere, you know, that being a South Indian. 
no, like uh, maybe for the people who don't know, a North Indian politician said, "We are living with the South Indians," as if you know he's making a big uh, concession like that. He compared so, us to <laughs> Africans, and he yeah. said, "We also live with blacks." We for also, example, yeah. South Indians. <laughs> Oh, uh, fact, uh, I yeah. think we have run yeah, yeah. out of time. It was a very interesting discussion with uh, uh, Pratibha. Thank you. I would like to thank her and thank, you, uh, thank, thank the organization. You. And before thank I end, uh, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I will not say there has been polarization, but let us say there has been contestation. And let the contestation go on that more and more original voices will emerge in Kannada literature. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.